how to dockerize a PHP application. If you're not here for how to dockerize a PHP application, um, the other sessions are on the right and left side. All right, this is track three. Uh, Kai is a DevOps specialist who has deployed Docker in production for about a year now. In this tutorial, he will be providing, uh, or rather, he will be providing a, a run through on how to dockerize a PHP application. And if he has time, which I'm very sure he does, no, sure. uh, <laughs> he will he will show how to deploy an AWS and uh, or core OS based host and uh, tips and issues. And I think you're going to keep it very fluid <coughs> on discussing how to yeah. deploy. Uh, and some of the issues that you'll be deploying. Yeah. Hopefully, so, yeah, my goal is that hopefully one of you will dockerize your, your application yeah. in these two hours. Yeah, and then I've seen him do this oh, have a good nap. Time, so he's great at this, right? And he's really an expert. So do ask him any questions about Docker and how to dockerize your PHP. With that, a round of applause for Kai. Thanks, uh, uh, all right. Um, so, how should we begin here? I'll probably just tell you a little about me and why I think I'm an expert. Um, I'm actually from South Africa. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm 38 years old. I started on Windows. I started on Windows and then I started using Linux uh, about, I don't know, 20 years, a long time ago. In fact, I, I studied at the University of Helsinki, um, hoping to, to meet Linus and Cotton on to the whole Linux movement. Unfortunately, he left by then. So it's just me and some other geeks. But uh, I've been using Linux for a long time. And Docker is very much a Linux te technology. And since then, I've been working for a whole bunch of companies. I've done uh, Linux distributions. And in my latest role, I am uh, work for a company called Spool, which is a video streaming site uh, aimed at Bollywood lovers. So Indian people usually, and we have a lot of users, and uh, yeah, we're rolling out Docker to production um, on Amazon uh, platform. So I'm, I'll show you how we do that, and um, let's let's get started, I guess. Yeah. Uh oh, what's the last point now? So yeah, um, I think Docker broke only into the scene like last year, so it's not really um, been around, it's not very mature maybe, so um, it is a bit strange to talk about production and, and all that sort of stuff, but um, yeah, it's quite good technology, and I'll tell you why. So yeah, I think this intro hopefully will take 30 minutes, but it probably won't, it probably be like 10 minutes. And then we'll do, and then I, I prepared a Docker tutorial. And uh, if you go to this URL, you can uh, have a look at the material. I'll, I'll just run by it one by one. I'll let you do that anyway. And then, um, and then I'm hoping we'll spend some time dockerizing your stuff. I mean, hopefully you all work on PHP applications, and hopefully they could be benefit from, from being dockerized or containerized. And then as a bonus, I was going to teach you how, how uh, the company I work for is deploying um, Docker in production. And of course, uh, we have zillions of uh, clients, and a big requirement for us is that there's no, no drop uh, HTTP requests, so there's zero downtime. Um, if you have any questions about Docker, just please let me know. Oh yeah, I, I run a couple of services in production, um, and um, yeah, I'm using. I'll get onto Travis CI and all the rest of it probably. Hopefully. So what is Docker? Um, I'm actually just made it up because um, I thought that'd be too easy to look at Wikipedia. So this is my definition. Um, it's pretty much the de facto standard in containers. Who knows what a container is actually? You know what? A, you know what a container is? Oh God. <laughs> a, a container is just like a service that's sort of packaged, is the way I think about it. And I believe um, Docker was started by a company called Dot Cloud, a French company. Who's French here? 
I like French food. Don't usually like French people, though. But anyway, Doc Cloud is quite awesome. I mean, go, uh, uh, the Docker name um, is better than Doc Cloud, I think. And and Docker is just a, is just a is just a user interface on a Linux container technology, otherwise known as LXC. So what we're going to do today is kind of silly, in my opinion, because where you you all who don't run Linux have to virtualize Linux in order to get Docker working. So unfortunately, like at my workplace, there's a couple of people that use MacBook Airs, and running Docker on a MacBook Air can be really, really slow. And I hope you guys have... Who's running a MacBook Air here? Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's really slow on, on a MacBook Air, I found. Um, and... Uh, I mean, there's, there's been solutions to like package things um, before, I guess, but the container is like more of like the whole system, and um, and a lot of people like uh, like when you when you think of Docker, they probably have like a, a picture of um, of uh, containers on a ship or something. I think that's a little bit of a strange way of thinking about it. You know, I think of I, I think of Docker being like the images themselves and. And the images, are, as we'll soon see, are, are basically layered, usually. Um, and, um, yeah, then I guess another thing about, con usually container, containing technology is like for security. But I think, uh, I, I think Docker generally avoids the security aspect. Like, I couldn't find any conclusive answers. Um, I think no developer claims that, that it's, it's really secure. I don't know. Do you guys have any? I mean, so I don't think of I don't think of Docker as like a security thing. I think it more of a of a distribution solution. I beg to for someone else's silly opinion. Um. Yep. Uh, that's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah. So the the three cool things about Docker is that uh, first off, the Docker file. It's like and really like. Like it's like a make file. It's like it's just it, it's usually just a few lines long, and it describes how your 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 system is packaged. It's really quite nice. So I'll show you an example of that. And then the, another cool thing about Docker is that you can push images. So, so say say you build your PHP uh, e-commerce app at this particular version, you can push it to a, a repository, and then and then you can have lots of services pull this image and deploy it. So that's really cool. And um, one, and then the, the next major thing about Docker that I really like is the, the simple Docker run. So if you have a, a host that has Docker installed, you can just type Docker run and uh, a few characters, and you should be up and running on that service. And that alone is, makes Docker like really, really awesome. But hopefully I can show you that. And by doing the tutorial, holy crap, my talk was like a lot less than ten minute, uh, half an hour. I have some stupid thing. Has anyone got an iPad Pro? <laughs> this is my iPad Pro attempt. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Can you see anything? I was hoping there would be a better board here. <laughs> uh, what else is? Uh, and then uh, hopefully, um, let's do the tutorial first. Can, you, can everyone open that URL? Have you, have you guys heard of GitHub? It's pretty awesome. Does everyone know how to like use Git and clone down stuff? I don't know how technical you guys are. Get the aircon on. Okay, so um, I'm just going to run through these Docker things with you guys, and hopefully, I'll you'll be running it too. Um, how should we do this to get you guys more interactive? 
hopefully this won't be too boring. Um, okay, Docker tutorial. So this is the Docker <laughs> tutorial. There's a brilliant README. Oh shit, wrong, wrong thing. This is the README file. You're supposed to read it. Uh, so, have all of you guys got um, Docker installed? Who hasn't got Docker installed? Uh, someone. Who's got an old version of Docker installed? Are you guys playing Pokemon Go? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Is anything around here? <laughs> okay. I'm. Since you guys are so quiet, if you okay, I'll say one more time. Does anyone need some help installing Docker? Have you got Docker installed? Is everyone on the internet? Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully, if you don't have Docker installed, maybe look over to someone else who's doing it. So, I'm. I'm going to ask you to run some commands, and these commands will install malware and make your computer completely owned by myself. <laughs> so hopefully you'll join in. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. So um, let's let's start with um, with the first thing. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, oh, so if you run this command, right, it will pull down and and run and run a and and run something, and what that runs will be a surprise. In fact, in fact, this even if you are running malware, I don't think um, this would be a safe command to run in a Docker parlance because you're not um, you're not binding when you run it like this it's running in like a s in isolation you're not running it um, bound to your system yet so even if you're running malware this should be fine I think this should be fine and if you're not if you haven't um, run this before you you'll see some different thing you'll see a pull can I see can I see someone playing along Stop playing Quake. Run, run, run this Docker Docker run command, guys. <coughs> Docker run abio soft slash caddy colon php. So um, in in a Docker, Im I think Docker. Im this is a Docker image is usually like prefixed by company name of the service, and then this colon here that mean uh, and something else that's a tag. Uh, usually, I think Docker has this concept of latest tag. But I usually like setting my tags. You, you, okay. So, oh yeah. I'm just showing. So basically, if you if you haven't if you haven't run this command before, what Docker does, it pulls down the image automatically. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a virus. Huh? It's a virus. It's not a virus. This is. I'll show you the virus later. <laughs> um, so. So if you see the um, the cool graphics, which I can't show you because I've pulled it before, what it does, it, it pulls down uh, 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 the image in each layer, and you uh, and you're probably thinking like, why is it even layered? But then I'll show you why. I'll show you how a bit later. But anyway, this does this actually doesn't work, and the reason why it doesn't really work is because we need to bind this port to 2015. It's the year 2015, isn't it? We need to bind this port to our host, and then it will work. So that's the first. That's the the, the second lesson of using Docker is you just bu you bind a you bind a port, uh, pretty much like this, and then you can use the service. Um, unfortunately, every service has usually different ports, but you can usually figure it out pretty easily. So if everything really goes well, like really really well. Like I didn't screw up anything. You'll see. You'll see something like this. Who's heard of PHP? It's a quite easy to use language, web applications. But this web page and PHP instance is coming from the Docker um, command that we I just ran. Whoops. That one. Yep. 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 Sorry. It's just gonna give us. Whoa. That's awesome. So. Um, I think this is like the easiest way to install PHP. Like, who's ever installed PHP manually? It's like app, Apache dash PHP, app get install PHP. It's a nightmare. PHP FPM. 
for this this particular Docker image that I'm giving you an example of, it has everything contained in that one image, and uh, and then you're basically away. And um, yeah, that's and the reason yeah the, the port is really important here. You have to you have to explicitly bind the port as I just did there with minus p switch. This is called a switch, I think. 2015, <coughs> 2015. So this is the host port binding to the uh, to the Docker port. So that's how it works. You bind your host to the container. Is everyone seeing something like this? Wait, who's got to this stage? The most awesome stage ever. Okay. Oh, you. Oh, sure. No, it shouldn't be necessary, but uh, I, everything I'll teach you will be like Docker up to 0 0.8. Or, uh, which Docker version do you have? Uh, 1.4. 1.4? Does that exist? <laughs> Is Docker a game? <laughs> that should be fine. Hey, does, does the run command, I mean, does this command work for you? This Docker run minus P? It's not working? It's working. It's not working. Not working. What does it say? Uh, it just stopped. Oh. Does anyone... What's your name? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Ubuntu use you use Ubuntu? That's good. Package name's bad. When Ubuntu is bad if you use get.docker.com, it will update the list of the package and install from the source. So oh okay. I don't use I don't use Ubuntu packages, I don't even know what the hell. Okay, well I think uh, I'll, I'll go slowly so you can probably catch up. So this is this um, the cool thing about this is that I, I did talk I did talk about security, but like this PHP is running in a in a container here. So if if someone managed to hack this uh, web application, it should only affect um, the container. And if you restart it, it should well you, should, you can start easily again basically. It's qu it's quite a good idea to run stuff in containers. Um, Generally, so yeah. Okay, next next little thing. Um, we can go through this again if you don't if you don't catch up. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that you could bind to different ports. So uh, you can bind to AD AT. I mean, typically, if you're deploying Docker in in production, you bind to AT, and then you get your load balancer to do the SSL and all the rest of it. So this is this is to show you it's not working anymore. Then I just go, eighty eighty, and it's working again. Isn't it amazing? Docker so easy. Okay, so the next one. Okay, I wanted to. When you do a Docker run, it actually does a pull before run if you don't have it. But I just wanted to show you what happens when a, a Docker pull is run manually. If the internet works, it should give you um, a, ha a, sh a SHA-1 sum, I think, and you can use that to track the particular image that you're using. So um, I, I use SHA-1 sums internally because I, I want to make sure that all the servers are running the same version, and that's how you do it. Okay, the next thing I want to show you guys is how to do environment variables. You usually, you usually have to use an environment variable when you're setting up um, a p the the, the thing that I, the stuff that I deploy at deploy work. I usually use environment variables to set up like all the credentials and that sort of stuff. And this is how this is how easy it is to do to 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 set an environment variable. You just use this minus e switch. And I have to go back to this one's stopped working. I have to go back to 2015. 
So that's, that's how easy it is to push in a, an environment variable. The other environment variables that you get in Docker are pretty damn useless, like this host name thing. I don't know what you can do with it. I haven't discovered what you could do with it. You can't do anything. Can you only add environment variables uh, by the command line? Uh, you, can, you can specify a file. Okay, so yeah. a file will still work. A file, yeah, I'll show you how that's done a bit later. Okay. But yeah, you can use the file, or you, yeah, you just use minus E. So yeah, using environmental ver ver variables. So, so basically, I'm just trying to point out that using, using the Docker command line is pretty simple. There are lots of other switches, like uh, minus IT means interactive, and dash dash RM uh, is, is, a, is an interesting one. Um, dash dash rm means remove the image once, uh, or sorry, remove the container once it's run. This is useful actually because because you sometimes you don't want the container. Sometimes you want the container just to have like what's the, the term for, or temporary data. Sometimes you just don't want to save anything, and dash dash rm allows you to uh, just nuke nuke the service without touching anything on your system because. If you don't run it with dash dash rm, you're going to have lots of images uh, left over. I'm going to show you that a bit later. But the most important thing in this le lesson here is the use of environment variables is really easy. Okay, what, what number are we on now? Cat 5.txt. So, oh, when you, um, when you run Docker, you can set a name. Uh, yeah, when you run a container, you can actually uh, make it stick around. And this is an example. Let's run it. Sorry, I should just go. So, in order to give it a name, it's just the dash dash name, and this one's called change me. Uh, and then I'm also running the switch minus D, which means run in the background. And minus P is, of course, that's that port stuff. Um, so now I'm running this in the background, and uh, and then what what to, I find I don't know if you guys have got better experience than I do, but I usually find that if I want to debug what's going on in, inside the uh, inside the running container, oh, I haven't shown you how to see a running this Docker Docker PS shows you the running container. See this one's up for 31 seconds. So uh, what am I going to say? So in order to see what's going on in a running container, you, you usually have a shell available to you. And I usually just go inside that container running docker exec and the name of it. And then I can go go something like I can change I can change something like go hello docker tutorial peeps. And then if I go back to if I go back to the um, you know I, I can actually change it in the container and debug in the container. But if you, um, but yeah, you have to make sure that your container sticks around. Uh, if you if you're keen on your data, otherwise, usually, I run with dash dash rm, everything is lost. But I think the yeah the, the point I'm trying to say is that you should try and make your containers um, good from the beginning. You don't want to go in and change anything. That's a really bad way of doing it. But this is good for debugging. So docker exec, good for debugging. So um, if I did something like, oh, back here. If I did something like docker, oh no, mm, how can I show this to you? If I do like a docker, a docker stop change me, then the shell on the other side should die. Oops. Uh, oh. Change me. See that on the other side, they, on, on that side where I had that exact, the, uh, the shell dies. So, yeah. That's how you get inside your container and you fiddle around. Because one day you'll probably need to do that. Uh, 
what is the next thing? Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is uh, a volume mount. Who knows what a volume mount is? Okay. Well, um, so yeah, a Docker container has ideally everything encapsulated in it. Uh, but you should only think of the thing of the stuff that you want to encapsulate is the service. And usually a service requires data. <coughs> the usual way that people do this is uh, using, um, if they want data, they, they use a, like a, a database, like MySQL or MariaDB, or, and they make some sort of network connection to their data store. But I'm a bit old school, and I like to, I like to use uh, flat files. So, so the way you do that in the Docker world is that you, you bind you bind a, a directory, uh, an absolute path. Is that the correct term? Yeah. And that you bind an absolute path from your host to the um, to the relevant part in, in your container. So in this particular container example that I'm using, Avio Soft Caddy, the index file is an SRV. So what so what I can do here in this in this example that I'm hoping to show you is that I bind the source directory into SRV and then. And then, and then I can change things and uh, and have persistence and and use all my and all my development tools on my host or something like that to to fiddle around. But um, the only thing that's common between these two things will be that directory. So let's try let's try that out. Uh, uh oh. Will this work? Uh oh. Okay, so back here. So, so now I, I, I bound the SR, the source directory here. Okay, so uh, what can I do here? Hello, Docker tutorial people. Again, I have nothing more to add than that. Yeah. So the cool thing about um, about this is that you can kill the container. Uh, what did I call? Stop. Uh, mount me. So that container will be dead, but. The, the index will still be there. And if I, if I run the command again, well, I have to, I have to RM it, I think. And then I, then I can, uh oh, what have I done? Oh yeah, you're right. I'm in the wrong directory. <laughs> You're keeping attention. Brown biscuit for you. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Da da. So yeah, you can kill your container. You can you can bring it back. The the your logic is is there, but you shouldn't really be using that for for source unless you're developing. <coughs> I use it um, to for my data and my applications, but you know. Do what you like with Docker, I guess. Make 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 your own mistakes. Okay, so that was that lesson. Are we on? Are we on seven? We're going really quickly. Oh my god! Does anyone want a break? I want a break. <laughs> uh, okay, I was just putting. It, I think I was just putting it together for you guys here. Because if you if you were, oh uh oh, what have I done wrong? Mom needs to run it. Yeah. So the 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 commands are quite simple. Stop to stop a container. Rm to delete it. This is why you should be using dash dash rm. So the cool thing about dash dash rm 
is that you you can you can break and run it again, because what happened what what happened was uh, was the the image was uh, removed. Okay, so so I'm just putting it together here again, and in this case I'm I'm, I'm using the environment variable which I love to do into my index my my source to index.php. Sweet. So yeah, now I think um, most of you who have an application hopefully just have it sitting on some directory, right? And, and in a sense, you can dockerize your application or begin to dockerize your application with just this one line. Boom! You can go to your boss. I've done it. I've done it, boss. That's how, that's how you pretty much dockerize, you begin to dockerize your own application. But I think uh, hopefully we'll go through your stuff in more detail. But that's pretty much how you get started. Okay, let's go on to the next lesson. What are we on now? Is it eight? Oh, okay, now we're getting on to the beef, guys. We're getting on to the beef. This is where, this is when things get real. Now we're gonna do a build. So um, that that's a this is a very basic Docker file, and my plea to all of you is keep your Docker file simple. Don't like try to impress anybody by making it complicated. The simplest Docker files are the best Docker files, in my opinion. And all this Docker file is doing is using um, that particular container which already has a PHP and a web server inside it. All it's doing is adding the source directory, which I'm assuming in my case here is where my index.php resides, and putting it into the containers directory, which is SRV, and, 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 creates, and creates the image. So let me show you how that's done. It's as simple as doing this, you, you run Docker, uh, build minus T uh, to give it a name or was it a tag who knows I don't so and, and when you build it can be really quite quick too because because um, docker has a like an intelligent build system so so it, it knows that um, the base container which you you're from in here hasn't changed and it, it also like kind of knows maybe that your source directory hasn't changed. So so the Docker builds happen real quick, real quick. Has, has anyone used the uh, AMIs on, Doc, uh, on on Amazon? Building an AMI slow. Building a Docker image real fast. If you, <coughs> got, if you especially if you got the layers around. I guess I I guess if I change the source right now like. I just changed it, like fixed. Fixed it. If I, I think it should realize that you can see here that it's it's it hasn't used the cache. See there, it used the cache here. Hey, no, it didn't use the cache. Why? Because it realized that I changed something in the source. It's so clever. I love clever technology. It's like make files. Who who uses make files here? Make files are for pros. I love make files, but no one knows how to use a tab character properly, so that's the reason why they've fallen out of favor. So yeah, um, what did I do there? I created, I created a Docker image from using, uh, and that has everything inside it. And if I if I think if, if I run Docker images, it should show you it should show you all the images I've ever built, and the and the last one is on top. So you can see I use Docker all the time. Why has... Okay, sorry about the formatting there. You can see... Um, oh, right, no, you can't really, but the image is for 84 megabytes, which is, I think is quite small. And the reason why it's quite small is because my, my, my from image is quite small to begin with. I'll show you that a bit later. But yeah, you can see... Every time you, you build an image, you get a particular image ID. Um, 
Ideally, you, you tag it. I'm not just sure where my tag's gone, or Nate, or brothers, you name it, as I did there. Don't be an idiot and don't name it, like I did here. So that's, 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 this is, this is basically how, this is the beef, this is the meat of, of Docker right here. Your images. So I created an image, I think. And now all, all is the, all there's left is, is just to run it. And I'm sure it works because I spent my Sunday checking this worked. Okay, so yeah. So there's no volume mounts. I basically put my source code into this PHP ATP thing and, and I'm running it. So that is pretty much how you dockerize your PHP application. Of course, you guys are probably using Nginx and Apache or some other different version of PHP. We, all of those different scenarios can be addressed. You just need to ask me. I like using Caddy. Uh, who's heard of Caddy web server, by the way? Anyone? The reason why I like Caddy is because uh, it gives you SSL for free, and the configuration is very easy. No one uses Caddy? You guys are missing out. It's like, it's like the new Docker, guys. <laughs> you heard it here first. OK, so. Yeah, that's that's how easy it is to, to make a dockerized thing, guys. Uh, what's the last lesson here? Oh, I yeah, I thought you guys might say, but oh, I, I don't want to use Caddy. I want to use Apache, just like we do at work. So um, with this command, this fancy ass command, oh, is it still running? <coughs> no, it's not running. With this command, I'm actually using the official PHP Docker image by PHP Foundation or something. And this is how easy it is to get running. No, wrong. So this is, a, this is running the official PHP image. And all I, all I had to do, um, I mean, I pulled it already before you guys. Is is use is basically just use a different uh, uh, image thing, and it automatically pulls it down and runs it. <coughs> so you don't you, you don't have to trust my caddy image. You can you can trust PHP. And you, if you go to the Docker Hub, you can see what uh, images are available. You probably don't want to use my image because you can't trust me. I'm just some bozo. He's just embarrassing himself in front of you guys. No, oh, is this the PHP one? Where's the PHP one? Okay, so PHP has an official repository. So Docker Hub is a remote place where images can get pushed to. You can use different places to, to push your image. You can have your own image server, which, which I do at work because all of our stuff is pr private, proprietary code, and everyone knows that proprietary code is so much better than open source. Mm. Everyone knows that. Yes. So we're not, it's not about saving myself from embarrassment. But <laughs> anyway, so this is the PHP repository. And you'll find that different projects, I think, like Nginx and, uh, I don't know, there's lots of different projects on, on Docker Hub. It's kind of like the GitHub for, for images you can see that they, that, that PHP Foundation supply all these different flavors of Docker image, images. Who uses PHP 7 here? I hate you. Docker, um, PHP 5 is where it's at, guys. Who's using PHP 5? <laughs> 5 alive. I think there's some 5s here, yeah. To be honest, I don't use these images, but I think, uh, if, uh, I think professionally speaking, if I was deploying PHP in production, I'd probably use these things because I'm I'm one of these believers that that upstream should know best. I I actually don't like um, a lot of Linux distributions in the sense that they make their own like build flag tweaks to packages. I think that's kind of bald. Upstream should make these sort of decisions and maintain the whole life cycle and all that stuff. 
So as you can see, they give like the CLI version. I don't know why you would use PHP on the CLI. Who does that? There's the Alpine version, and which which uh, which I really recommend. Alpine is basically uh, instead of using the fat libc of Ubuntu, they use a like a much smaller libc based on this new libc called Muscle. So I, I like I recommend uh, Alpine. Apache Apache is a web server, isn't it? Or it's a tribe that got wiped out by the white man. It, no, it's a web server. Yeah. It's a web server. I'm sure it is. Uh, I don't use Apache. Who uses Apache nowadays? Legacy. I think Nginx is a lot better, isn't it? Yes. FPM for you guys who don't know is uh, like the... I don't know how to explain it. It's like the proxy thing that talks through the web server. Yeah. What is ZTS? Does anyone know? I don't even know what ZTS is. Zen Threat What? What does that mean? Okay, you can give a talk about that later. <laughs> okay, then we have the PHP 5. Okay, so I wanted to say here at this point that um, that there's different ways of deploying uh, uh, PHP. Some people, some people actually deploy PHP in Docker containers. Like they have one container for the PHP FPM and then they have another container for the web server, and then they link them up. But I think that's a little bit over-engineered. I like to have everything like just together. Like, this is the service. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's just about as, as interesting as PHP is. PHP images are, sorry. Does anyone else use a different PHP image out of interest? Geek boy in the front. Uh, <coughs> I, to be honest, I, I think that these images focus a little bit too much on the CLI. I mean, who uses PHP on the CLI? That's crazy. Yeah. You? No. No. <laughs> you? Anyone? Yeah, there's too much of a focus of, uh, on, uh, this is more realistic. It's pretty much like my example. Oh, you do? Unit tests? What are they? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I know what they are. Okay. I know where you'd use the CLI. PHP minus L. Oh. Okay, so <coughs> oh, you might want to uh, you, you might want to override the PHP .ini if you're crazy and install some extensions if you're nuts. So yeah, I think this is a more real maybe this is a more realistic example of a Docker file. I think the someone's installing some JPEG conversion stuff, but it's full. What is PECL? Who knows what PECL is? Yeah, it's Peckle, you're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as, I, as my example shows you, um, you can just run it like this. But I, I, I must say that um, the official images, the, they're huge. Like, let's have a look at the sizes here. Docker images. Uh, grep, hmm, Apache. <laughs> it's 404 megabytes. I, suppose, I, I think my, my, the images that I usually use are 80, 80 megabytes. And I think it's a good idea to keep them small because if you, uh, if you get onto like uh, Amazon deployment, when you want to scale, when you want to scale your service to like millions of users, the way to do that is to spawn a new instance and pull the image. And you want to do that in like as least time as possible. If you're pulling like a huge image, it takes time. So if the image is like 40 megabytes, the image is pulled, run, and you're away. Serving um, your spike in demand. Okay, I think that's pretty much the basics done. Did everyone kind of get that? Did you manage to install the real Docker? Did you run some of these commands? 
Do you have a virus now? No, you don't. Safe. So, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show you guys. There's some, oh, there's some more advanced stuff here. Um, let's, let's start with the... Okay, this is, this is slightly more advanced. This will only work in the very, very, very latest uh, Docker, 1.12 or something like that. And uh, using those lines, you can basically embed um, an environment variable at build time. It's just a new feature I, that's come out with, uh, with uh, the latest Docker. And why would you want to 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 um, to embed environment variable with your with your Git ver with the version? Why would you want to do that? So you know what the hell you're deploying. Uh, it's really quite useful. It's a little tip. So basically, in your in your PHP code, you just echo out this commit <coughs> variable, and it tells you the version of your of your source code. So so basically, if we do a scale event at work. I can just have a look at the bottom of the foot on the footer where people don't look or ever scroll down to, and I can see they're running the right version. And that's how you do it. I can just run those commands for something to do. So git describe tells you what the, the current version is. BD whatever. Build it, build it. Uh oh. And then run it. No, wrong one, wrong one. You see, that's how you expose the version in the image. And as far as, I'm just going to drink this because I'm thirsty. If someone has a better idea about embedding versions, because that took me ages to figure out. This took me ages to figure out. What, I'm, what I just showed you here is going to save you maybe half an hour max, but it took me a long time to figure this out. The other more advanced thing I wanted to show you is Composer. Who uses Composer? Hardly anyone. <laughs> no, but four or five people. To be honest, I don't think you should use Composer because that means you're going to become the next Node.js junkies and start using a thousand million dependencies. Dependencies are bad, people. But no, I, I this, um, you do you do need to use um, dependencies sometimes, like PHP. No. So uh, in this example. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone has any particular questions. We, we can go through them. Well, in this in this e example, a I'm showing how the ca the caddy uh, server is installed, but also the the composer is installed, and then importantly, um, and, uh, importantly, there's there's a line saying saying what your dependencies are. You can use the compose compose.json in your source directory. You can do it that way. Um, but I prefer to do it this way because it's more explicit. And another important thing, when you're constructing your Docker file, it's important to have the dependency added before you add the, the, the source because I find that there's some sort of, uh, what do you call it, some ordering problems. Like if you, don't, you, don't want, you don't want your source to come before the, uh, the, 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 the the SDK download because uh, if you change the source, it could trigger, it probably will trigger the compose to run again, and and installing the, um, the Amazon SDK takes like like five minutes. So this is how you get running with compose. So in this I don't know 35 lines of code, I've I've kind of described quite a complex system. I mean, if you're using if you're using the Amazon SDK, your 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 app is probably pretty hardcore. Already, so and um, okay, we could look at the Docker file for the Apache or Nginx Engin Engin one, which will be a bit more complicated. But I kind of like how how simple this one is. 
like you, another thing you do in a Docker file is that you expose the ports that you're going to use. Work do it. Just, work do it just means that keep everything in that uh, in, in, in that present working directory. Set that as the present working directory. <coughs> the entry point and command stuff is a little bit compli uh, complicated. You basically it tells the Docker the Docker image what is the default binary to run, and you can actually override that, which is pretty sweet. Otherwise, I think it's all quite simple. This APK is just the package manager of, of Alpine. You know, running curl, which is probably a bad way to install something, but at least it's over HTTPS. This is how you write to a file. This is this is what I think makes Docker really successful. Is this is this is this Docker file? It's really really simple. I think it's simple. Anyone have any questions about this? I mean, usually usually you just do it from. And you don't even have to do this stuff. Someone who's cleverer than I, I am, pretty much did that stuff. But this is how you can you you define a whole service, which is so nice. And uh, oh, I'm not too sure. I don't think I have the energy to run through this example. But this example here shows you how to set up how to. I think on this example, this took me way too long to figure out last night. Who uses the Amazon SDK? Who, who's ever designed it? It's like really hard to use. It's like factory, constructor, all this thing do, does is send an email. You know, this reminds me. The reason why I got into PHP years and years ago is because it was simple. Remember the good old days, guys? <laughs> Remember the good old days? Yes. Oh my god, this, this documentation, it's sweet! It runs! It, and then they, then they just made, then they just screwed it up, didn't they? Then they loaded fonts. Then they added object-orientated code. <sighs> object-orientated code, hate that stuff. And then most APIs now have like really complex constructors and things like that. But look at this! It just returns a boolean. You just write it. It's just one line. Now look at what we have. Isn't it amazing to advancing technology? Well, to be honest, Docker is a good advancing technology. This is bullshit. Just, just know the difference, okay? Just trust me here. Good, bad. Good, bad. Good, bad. Good, bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> I spent hours on that yesterday. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I don't have the energy to, to show you my Amazon I, um, ID right now. Yeah, I would have to expose my Amazon ID if I'm going to get this working. But it does work. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that dumb to show you my ID and key. Why <laughs> No way, guys. No ways. You're going to hack my email. So, oh god, is that two hours already? It's one hour. I think let's take a break. And after after that, I was I know that there's not much space here, but I wanted to actually look at at everyone's project, steal the code, sell the code, and retire. But no, I wanted just to see what you guys are developing, and. Uh, and and, doc and help you dockerize it. I mean, hopefully we can do that and at the same time go to toilet, get a drink. There's actually a beer tap over there. If you can drink beer, can. get me one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the rest of the, the session, I, I just wanted to um, go through the stuff again, help you dockerize your app. Because once it's dockerized, it's gonna be super easy to, to deploy. And if and if uh, if I get some, once I've rested, then I'll show you how I deploy on Amazon, and it's like it's fast and it scales, and it's what you guys should be using too, using the ECS uh, CLI. I don't know if you've heard of it. Okay. <sighs> Thank God, that was that was painful.
So, using the power of Apple Pro and a pencil, I cre created this monstrosity. <coughs> to be honest, D Docker has a huge community. You're going to find, if you just Google the stuff, you'll find all sorts of cool stuff. <coughs> but I thought I'd be really cool by just making some original content. So yeah, this is what I want to express. You can get image stores can be for Amazon ECR if you want to if you want to private. You can use Docker Hub, push pull. You can build you can build into your local images, or you can push out through uh, Travis. Hey, who's using Travis? I didn't even get onto that. Anyone using Travis or Circle CI or John? Drop? Drop? John. Drone. Drone. Yes. Never heard of that one. This is Docker Rising CI. Oh, it's a Docker one. Oh, okay. Uh, CI is a wonderful thing to waste a lot of time. I <laughs> find. But, um, but I, I can show you the way my. If you guys are interested, I can show you how I made my pipeline that builds that builds the Docker image and it installs it on Docker Hub or something like that. And then, uh, and then, obviously, once you have the image on your on your machine, then you run the container. And uh, the Brazilian guy, Daniel, yes. Brazilian guy. How many gold medals did you guys get? How many gold medals? I think six. It's nothing compared to England. No. Yes. Number two in the world. Heard of it? It's called Great Britain. <laughs> Recently, became independent from Europe. Almost. Um. Yeah. Are we all back yet? When you ship the containers to production, uh, the code is like encapsulated as part of the container? Yes, yes. The code is in the container. Uh, and usually the way it works is that you, you specify an environment, in, in an environment variable uh, what your, your database stuff is. So if anyone's using Travis, uh, here's an example of how of how uh, we um, so what happens okay this is just like a, a manufactured example but like you do you do it you do a git push and then uh, in this case you guys probably all have proprietary code because proprietary code is a lot better than open source code as I mentioned before but in this case this is how we, we push to, to Amazon uh, container store, which is private, because our code is private. And so obviously, some of the assets are private too. So, yeah, the, if if anyone, you guys can feel free to email me or whatever. I can show you how my pipeline works. How my pipeline works, and then you can with Travis, you can embed the secure keys. I actually haven't finished my presentation. Okay, I'm going to resume because I don't know what else to do. So I did that thing. Yeah, I have this horrible graphic. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, I think of containers more like uh, bricks than con than 40 foot containers on the back of a ship because usually they need to be linked up or something like that. Uh, as I, I mean, I talked about this before. But in my example, I kept it simple by having PHP and the, and the web server in one container. And uh, Daniel was saying that he, you, at your workplace, you use PHP uh, linked with the web server. That might be might be a bit better. And and then and then some and obviously you'd have a, you'd probably link to another container running your database. That's how that's how you do it. And you would keep everything sane using Docker Compose, which I might show you a bit later. Or you could have everything running in one container. I don't know. It's up to you guys. It's this is this is up for up for debate. Um, I, w I was going to mention there is a limitation with EC2 the way memory works, but 
Ide ideally, the cool thing about Docker, it's sort of, you know, in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the noughties, you had VMware, where the isolation with, you know, you said how much memory that, that VMware is going to get. The cool thing about Docker is that the virtualization is a lot lighter weight. It's, lot, it's like it's a native Linux feature. And you, you, you use the resources of that bare metal machine a lot more efficiently. And you, and you can share the memory a lot more efficiently. So don't run Docker on VMware unless you're crazy. Don't do that. <coughs> So the important thing of, um, about using Docker in production is the pipeline. Um, if anyone uses, uh, uh, what do you call it, CI, what does CI stand for? Continuous integration. <laughs> if anyone uses CI, you might know that it's quite slow. Once you do a git push, a Travis build can take like 10 minutes, because what Travis does is, it, it itself, Travis is a Docker company, I guess. I think it sets up a container, grabs your source code and builds it. But that can take a long time. Uh, so, so doing a whole like, like say this like a, a stupid mistake in the production server. Like Kai, we need to change this now, otherwise our service are we gonna lose a million bucks? Doing it this way is kind of slow. What I usually do is like just build the app lo locally, and then I might just push it. I I I, I push it to a machine or something, and then and then I'm, I'm running it. Well, I, I push it to my ECR rather. And then, I, and then I'm running it. And this, this approach, this sort of, uh, this is usually the steps that I usually use. Because CI is for, for, for people who've got time on their hands. But if I'm doing something quick, I use this. If I'm, doing, if I'm a bit more casual, I use this approach. So this is how you do it. Uh, yeah, this is a very boring thing, but I think it's worth talking about. It unless you know all the negative sides of uh, something, then you're probably not an expert on it or something like that. Well, not to say that, I mean, am I an expert? I am in this case. But there's, with Docker, um, I think some guy, oh, you mentioned it before, like, with the Docker world, the minute you get into Docker and you, and you maybe search like Docker production, let's, let's do that. What kind of crazy will, results will we get? Uh, what the hell? A mon? Anyway, the, I, I wanted to basically say there's lots of like companies offering enterprise solutions for Docker, and the ones that I've seen are like viciously complicated, and even like digital, like who uses Digital Ocean here? Like lately, they've been pushing like, the whole clustering concept. I think that's really overkill. I I highly recommend you uh, just like. Just use, just run one container with a load balancer. That's seriously all you need. You don't need to use Kubernetes. You don't need to run Swarm, and 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 and, and I don't know, do crazy ass things with your, with your Docker image. Just keep it simple, is what I, ha I have to say. But unfortunately, there's even even like uh, Docker, the company itself are pushing Docker Cloud and the rest of it, which which offers an abstraction over Amazon and some other hosting services. I just find it just really silly way of of solving problems. It just these abstractions that they're doing makes things so complicated. Another thing I don't like about um, uh, about the, this new way of running services, the Docker way, is that you you don't have access to a full host. So it's typically you don't you don't have you don't have cron and cron is like to run time jobs. I find it difficult to run time jobs in the Docker world. I mean, there's different solutions. You probably have your own way. If it, who has a great solution for running time jobs on a on a cut down host? You do. Anyway, I find it difficult. There's no fantastic solutions for logging. Okay, um, I think at work we use something that was set up by somebody else, like Cabana and Elasticsearch, about 40 gigabytes of code just to be able to essentially log some stuff. Um, anyway, the, the logging solutions are not very easy to use. I personally, on my personal stuff, I'm beginning to use uh, CoreOS Systemd logging. Who used who uses the Systemd here? One person, two people. I, anyway, I'm using Systemd for logging on a personal level. 
It's going to take me ages to convince uh, my my colleagues to go to System D because System D like isn't really well supported on a server operating system, is it? Ubuntu has really crappy support for System D, but I think CoreOS has got good support. Okay, never mind that. Um, yeah, there's lots of container solutions out there. Like System D has its own container solution. But Docker, the good news is Docker is pretty much the um, the de facto standard. Another mistake, as I mentioned before, like Docker is 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 somehow cleverly isolating and sharing your resources. So running a running Docker on top of uh, EC2, I dare say, I know I'm in the Amazon office. It's kind of crazy, <laughs> but ideally you can run Docker on bare metal. Obviously, Docker requires Linux. And I'm a big Linux fan, but let's be honest, Linux is like a billion lines of code nowadays. It's not the same project it was back in the 90s or something like that. It's really, really, really complex. Sometimes I think Linux is just too bloated nowadays and I should be using BSD or live in a cave or something. Just get away from all. Linux is really complicated. But the cool thing is that Linux is so much better than that crap you all use Mac OS. And running, running <laughs> Docker on top of, of Mac OS is kind of nuts because you're having to run some sort of virtual box or virtual layer. So as I mentioned in the beginning, um, yeah, my colleagues who are using Mac OS and, and Docker, they're like, oh Kai, this is slow. Is this really better? Is Docker really better? Run it on my machine. It is blazing fast. On Mac OS, it is really, really slow. Another thing to watch out for is volume mounts. Uh, I, I gave you an example earlier, but the many tricky thing about volume mounts, actually, many tricky things like a volume mount, like for example, um, you've got to be careful. Like when you install things into the volume mount, it, they will probably like Docker doesn't actually allow you to install things into Docker mounts, and then there's like permission problems with volume mounts. Anyway, volume mounts, they they look simple. In practice, you might you might get um, you might get burnt. Uh, Docker housekeeping is another issue I've run into. You guys might have some good solutions here, but like if I go if I go Docker ps minus a, oh hmm, oh this is on my this okay that's on a different host. I mean I I have a, I run lots of Docker images, and I don't I, um oh these are my containers. These are my I, I run a lot of th I, I run a lot of tests and basically <coughs> you get uh, if you don't clean up after yourself you get a lot of cruft and it's not such a big problem here because I think all of my stuff is like quite small but um, we've had at least one case in a production server where we're going like hmm why is this production server running out of space this is strange but the what was happening was uh, Docker images were taking up space. So something to watch out for. Um, da, 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 da. Um, oh yeah, the, the first question I had when I started using Docker was like, where's your, where's your, um, where's your, how do you do virtual hosting? How can you have a, a web hosting technology without a virtual hosting or load balancer? Where's that? Where's load balancer? Where's virtual host? Where's load balancer? That's all the questions I was asking. But um, yeah, Docker doesn't have really great solutions for that. Uh, there's many ways you can address the problem, but it, in my experience uh, at work and things like that, I use the, um, I know it sounds a bit of a cop out, but the, the Amazon load balancer is extremely good and it works really well. So use that one. And it also gives you SSL and things like that. But you could, you could, uh, you could obviously run um, HA proxy in another container, but I think that also makes kind of things kind of complicated. And it's, it's best actually if your load balancer is on a separate instance. So yeah, these are the things you should watch out for. Yeah. I think that's my talk, yeah. So does anyone want to like, need some help like dockerizing their app or something or? Just use me, guys. Use me. <laughs> use me and abuse me. How? Does Zero.time deploy? Uh, pardon? Does Zero.time deploy? Using the 
Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, I can show you that. I can show you that. Yeah, I can show you that. Yep. Uh, yep. I can show you that. Amazon. Okay, actually, I have this weird problem where I can't see when I'm typing very easily. Oh, okay. Who uses Amazon anyway? Out of interest. Five. All of you, I guess. Well, you, um, actually, let's be diplomatic here and show you how I do it on uh, digital ocean too. Okay, guys, don't hack me. Please don't hack me. I'm going to show you digital ocean, but in all honesty, um, Close your eyes! <laughs> Shit, I'm too slow. Okay, so to do it on digital ocean... Okay, forget it. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, to do it on digital ocean, I use CoreOS. Uh, what are these other ones? Yeah, I use CoreOS. And... Um, yeah, for those who don't know what CoreOS is, you get you SSH to Docker uh, to CoreOS, and there's like pretty much nothing there. Okay, you have like your home directory, but there's nothing installed, and except Docker, and and you basically just go Docker run, and uh, you you set up services with a with a with a with a service file that looks something like this. Systemd service file. So, so this is how I roll it out on CoreOS. And CoreOS is actually quite sweet because it auto updates and randomly reboots your computer. Which sounds terrible, but it's actually quite good. <laughs> so what happens with, when you're running CoreOS is it updates itself and then it has some weird algorithm and then it reboots your machine. But Systemd um, restarts the service and makes it all work. So this is how I run it on CoreOS, and I recommend perhaps using CoreOS before using Amazon uh, Container Service, because the Amazon Container Service is quite complicated. It's like, you know how Amazon is, it like renames every technology in their own terminology just to make you really confused. It's, it's not a VPS anymore, it's an EC2. It's not a web server uh, file anymore, it's an S3 object or something like that. Um, so it's really, really confusing. So I really recommend running CoreOS, and you can run CoreOS on um, on on EC2 too. In fact, in fact, if you've got an old computer laying around the house, install CoreOS, familiarize yourself with SystemD. It's very good technologies. So, so basically, the way I set up a CoreOS machine is that I SH, I, um, I basically spawn it. Then SCP the um, the service file and then I enable and start the uh, the service file. That's all you do, I think. That's all you do because in the service file, you see this exact start pre. It actually pulls the image down and runs it. Everything is contained in the service file. Everything. I think, except maybe I have to copy in some. Forget the stuff I have to copy in. But everything's in here. Every, uh, I are sync in the data. Another cool thing about this is that, as I mentioned, CoreOS updates the OS and then reboots your machine. So everything's security patch. But also when, when um, the machine gets restarted, it does a Docker pull. So if I update this uh, image that I have, it gets updated. So I may, So this is like a fantastic approach to maintain lots of machines without any effort. I mean, anyone who app get anyone who has to SH into a machine and does does app get update and it just upgrade. You're doing it the old way, guys. This is the new way. <clears throat> so yeah, the core OS and now I'm going to show you Amazon. Oh my God, this is scary. <laughs> guys, you cannot get my my password here, please. <laughs> Please don't get it. Okay, wait. I gotta. I, I can't do this. Hmm. 
Sorry, I need to figure out a way to mirror the screen. Okay, I think you can see what I've seen. Amazon, Amazon. Oh my gosh, who's been using Alibaba Cloud? Oh my god, it's really bad. I thought it makes Amazon look really, really good. Okay, guys, close your eyes. <laughs> you know how this works. Um. Oh, quick advertisement, because um, I am a, what do you call it, attention-seeking junkie. I have, a, I have a YouTube channel, and I usually, um, some of the videos are about uh, how to, yeah, this, this is a video about, you need a website. oh shit, no you don't Why need a website. <laughs> you don't need a website. Create your own professional website. Hey guys, I want to very quickly. Okay. So, I have a YouTube channel. It's amazing, and you should subscribe. But the, the reason why you should su su subscribe because I actually I, I'm going to do what I'm going to do here. But I took a video of it earlier, so if I screw what I'm going to do up here now, you can just watch this video. Um, and um, in this video, I'm, I use a, a program called HTTP Ping to prove to you guys that uh, the, the Amazon load balancer doesn't drop a single request. But I did notice that when it does a transition. Um, sometimes it can be a bit, the latency can be quite high. But besides that, um, I chat about really interesting things like uh, where to buy lightning cables and things like that. It's not just, it's not just about stuff like that. I think I also talk about core OS and, right, sure. and all sorts of stuff. I've even got my wedding, don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so please subscribe if you're interested. And uh, if you have any requests, I can make a video maybe. <clears throat> okay, so let's get let's 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 have a quick dive into um, Amazon. Amazon. <coughs> so I dare say it's not just because I'm here and I'm eating their food. Um, Amazon is the best platform to to roll out a production service. I'd say. Really, it is the best. And Amazon have a couple of uh, projects that make, uh, they're quite new actually, and they're, and they're all like, I don't know, zero point something versions, but they actually do work. But it just takes some time to get f familiar with them. So Amazon have their own like Docker optimized images to deploy Docker images to and run them. And uh, ECS agent orchestrates this stuff. And the tricky stuff, is when you is orchestration when you want to roll up roll out a new version because usually what happens is that you have two instances running they both have the old version you want to take down one of them put in the new version if that if that stabilizes then you want to put in the other new version so you both have the new version so this is what the agents for and this ECSCLI you can actually do everything through through this container service uh, web interface but I prefer to use, um, I prefer to use this because it's faster. I think it's faster. It is faster. So this is the Amazon EC2 service. Who's using this, by the way? One person. Okay. So yeah, um, I'm going to start from scratch here, I guess. 
Let me just think how I'm going to do this because I don't want to show you my key. <laughs> <laughs> this is really tricky. <laughs> Uh, pardon? Is it a distance running Amazon remote? You don't have to show me key. Let's meet up with the road. Um, uh, let's just go for it. Get started. No, 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 no. Okay, let's just. Um, What? Next step. Okay, so so Amazon provide a whole bunch of services, but but most of you guys probably have proprietary code, and uh, a big part of Docker, as I tried to explain earlier, is that you need to store the images somewhere so that your so that your new machines can take the image and run them. So in in the, in the Amazon terminology, this is called EC2 container registry. I don't know why they called it that, but the do the Docker version is called Docker Hub, and I think Docker Hub have a have a, a private uh, repository too. And uh, you can use you can use Docker Hub or you can use EC2 Container Registry, but I know EC2 Container Registry is probably the better choice because I'm running out I'm, I'm deploying on EC2 instances. I need the Container Registry to be fast, and there's one in Singapore. Just recently, they launched in Singapore. So I, so guys, I mean, there's alternatives, but I can tell you which one's the best through my own experience. So, so basically, here I'm. I, I set up a repository. Uh, at the, I, I, God knows what that should. Can you see what I'm highlighting? Yeah. yeah. God knows what that means. But let's let's uh, let's find let's uh, let's deploy an application, right? Okay, Docker tutorial. <laughs> uh, which one did I build last? PHP tutorial. Yeah, this, uh, if this works, this would be amazing. Okay. Okay. So this is what I'm going to try to deploy on Amazon infrastructure now. Hopefully, hopefully this is going to work. Okay. Close your eyes, guys. Close your eyes. Uh, build the tech. So it's this easy to set up a private image store. Oh shit. Oh, you can't just create one. Okay, I have to tag it. Tag? Okay, I should just follow the instructions, shouldn't I? Now you have to choose the... I think I think it's a bit fussy about the, uh, the the name. Let me just run it just to make sure it's not crazy. Okay, that's fine. Okay, make life easy and run what they the name. Tag it, push it. So in production, I usually tag things with the uh, Git revision numbers. And that way, I know exactly which image I'm running. I use everything around Git short hashes. So as you can see, it's quite fast. But this is only 80 megabytes. And as you can see, it's pushing in layers. So the cool thing is, it's if I change something small here, it should uh, it should just push one layer. 
So let's change something small. <coughs> something small. If I build that again, oh no. Yeah, that's what I did. If I build that again, no. And then I tag it and then I push it. It should be very fast. See how quick that is? See how quick, see, see, see how quick that, what the hell's it doing? It's quick. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, it worked this time. <laughs> the gods, the demo gods have been kind. So now that's how easy it is to, to push a, a container. So as you can see here on, on Amazon, uh, oh, I got two. Oh, actually, there's kind of a bug on Amazon. Um, if you if you reuse a tag, the old one gets the the tag removed. It can only have one latest. So this is the this is the old one. And uh, once again, that, that's that's a problem with Docker. Everything. If you use a lot of images, you can you can have a lot of uh, you can have a lot of old stuff laying around. But I did actually email Amazon. I said like if I if I if I upload um, two huge images and they share all the layers. Do I get charged for for one for one image, one one terabyte image, or do I get charged for two terabyte images? And the Amazon guy says, you get charged um, for for the shared stuff. You don't you won't get double charged. So it is what do you think it is to be? Okay, so now we have a Docker image. Privately, so this is this is your private code, your your production instance. Now you need to get it onto your machines. And um, I'm trying to figure out how you do this without showing my key. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be tricky. You can create a, a new key just to use here and later delete it. Yeah, but that's still, I won't be fast enough. <laughs> you guys will hack me. Okay, I can probably get this running. Let me try get this running in here without actually... Uh, let me just let's just do a quick test. This might be a complete fail zone. Okay, so an Amazon Pylance a cluster is a collection of uh, e uh, EC2 instances. That's all, that's what a cluster is. So in in, in here you you should have uh, container instances, and uh, and each container instance is running a task, and actually what that means is a, a Docker image, I think. And a service is a collection of Docker images. It's really confusing. You're probably not going to get it. Just believe me, it works. I think the first thing I would do is, um, hmm. Oh, I have to define a task. Okay, this, if this fails, I just, hmm. So, task different. Okay, this is where you put the container name. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to give this a try for two minutes before I give up and use something and use the command line. So, this is the container image. Oh, that one. This is the most important thing. You, you name the, no, what have I done? You name the image and give it a name, foobar. <coughs> Another really irritating thing about the Amazon EC2 world is that you have to, you have to define uh, how much memory you're gonna use in advance. I think I can get away with 128 megabytes. Let's do a soft limit. And the port mapping, as you remember, it's 2015. But then I have to go 80 or something. Will this work? This could be embarrassing. I said soft limit. What does it want me to do now? Add, add. Okay, so container name, right, 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 right. Is this going to work? Create cluster, create cluster. 
You see two instants. Why do you add one? Okay, this is when things get bit. This is why, this is, I'm going to show you why you should not use the web interface because it's really confusing. Okay, I usually use the ECS images. Hmm, where are they? Why is it giving me elastic beanstalk? Okay, this looks right. Yeah, I'll just use this one. Let's just go for me, 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 Okay, I'm not going to use the web interface. As you can see, the web interface is very irritating <laughs> and it doesn't work very well. Okay, I'm just going to use the ECS CLI. Yep. Oh, damn. Thanks. Okay, so let me see. You can put your credentials on a file, right? Huh? You can put your credentials on a file. Uh, don't share it. I, I'm just going to assume this is going to work. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, okay. So ECS CLI, it gives you some. Okay, let's, I'm going to hope this is going to work. Okay. Uh oh. So I don't know how you guys feel about the CLI, but I find it a lot usually easier than, than using the web interface. And you kind of need to use the web, you, know, you need to use the ECS CLI when you want to scale quickly and things like that. So the ECS CLI is easy because it sets up your cluster um, using CloudFormation. So it sets up all the security groups and VPCs. You can actually set it up to um, to to use your own VPC if you have an existing one or your own security groups, but the defaults are very nice. So the so the whole idea about using oh oh god what have I done? The whole idea with using the ECS CLI is that hmm. Sorry, I can't. I just wanted to show you how it all works. Uh, okay. So, well, once the cluster is set up, all you do on the ECS CLI compose uh, thing is you, is you specify the image. So in our case, it will be that like weird number, ECR, blah, 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 slash PHP tutorial. You set up uh, the ports and you set up uh, the memory limit. And then, and, and, and that is essentially how you do it. For more complicated services where you're linking different containers, then you have to have more lines and what have you. But this is honestly how I, I pretty much do production stuff. And it works really, really, really well. So it works with the composer syntax? Yeah. No changes? Yeah, it works with the composer syntax. To be honest, I haven't really pushed it. I haven't, I keep things simple. As I mentioned, um, as I mentioned, I don't run more than one container on an EC2 instance because of the memory, because it doesn't share memory, as far as I know. Maybe they fixed that problem. But if you, the, since you can't share memory, there's no, it's really difficult to carve up uh, the resources of a machine. So it takes a little bit of time to set up properly. And um, maybe I should just show you my crazy video.
don't know. Oh. God, I hate this. Sorry. Actually, I actually use Wix, and I'm still getting spammed by them. For a friend, I, obviously, I would just write it myself. I just wanted to show you how this compose stuff works. See, this th this is what you do if you want to scale it out to two instances. But one, actually, there's a lot going on. Actually, once you scale out to uh, you use the command to set up new instances, and then once you've done that, then you have to run another command to push the image out to the new instances. So it's not it's not all magical in, in a bed of roses, but it, it it does work. Okay, it's still creating, my god. Does anyone have like want to do some dockery docky docky things? Yeah, I'm just looking at yeah, this whole thing just takes like half an hour even if you're doing the right things. Unfortunately, it is slow to initially set up. Um, there are some good things about the web interface. If you look at, th at this events tab, that one there, it actually tells you if you're making a mess, it, it tells you like the errors. For some reason, it doesn't show you the errors on the command line very well. But events, if you're wondering why your image isn't being deployed or something like that, look at the events tab. That will save you a lot of time. Oh, um, um, I'm not too sure what's rolled out in Singapore, but. The ECS stuff is quite powerful. It, it, there's metric stuff. You can set up alarms. There's also auto scaling. I'm not sure if it's available in Singapore. So you can set like an alarm to say that like if you're getting uh, a certain amount of traffic, you can scale to another machine automatically. So it's quite quite nice actually. Oh, this thing this thing's important here. Um, one big problem with setting up this ECS is that setting up the load balancer is kind of kind of like a bit hard for some reason but, but the load balancer is really crucial to get right okay it's set up a cloud stuff okay so what does that mean so that means uh, in your in your EC2 uh, tab no 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 this one this means that it's got a, 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 an instance running with, with the ECS agent. So it's got an IP. Can you guys all see that? So basically, this ECS is now run, ready for running Docker images. That's the theory. And you can use ECS uh, CLI like PS. I think <coughs> PS should show you the running images. OK, maybe it doesn't. Um, let me see, ECS, CLI, Compose, Service, up. Okay, so to, to basically um, make the Docker agent start running your, your um, container, you have the Docker Compose file there, and then you run ECS, CLI's com uh, service up. I'm just running it with one of my test things, and then hopefully... <coughs> so what what is happening here is that it if I if I actually I could do this probably if I SSH into this machine oops if I SSH into this machine I could probably show you oh what's the IP What the? I hate the things I don't copy very well. Copy. What doesn't it? This <laughs> is H. Um, why doesn't it want to copy? Okay. Anyway, 
I, if, I, if I managed to successfully SSH, SSH, I would show you, you can actually see the agent doing a pull. So now if I do ECS uh, CLI, it's actually running um, the container that I just pushed out there, I hope. No, what is it? Is it port 80? No! <sighs> Sorry, I can do this, I can do this, this is technology. Okay, this, this is my uh, container. So, um, okay, I'm not, um, let me just show you how quickly it is to scale. I think that should work. Sorry, I forgot the syntax. How do you scale again? Oh, something like that. So this is why I like the command line interface, is that if you, if you just click, if you just run uh, scale size two, that means you're, and I guess this should, I should have timed it, shouldn't I? Let's just start timing it now. But I don't know how your work workplace does it, but it, my workplace used to uh, do um, an, a a an AMI snapshot and then um, start a new machine with, um, with uh, okay, that take, took about 20 seconds. H scale. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that that scale thing gets another gets another machine running, but then you then then you then the next step is to do this. If there was if there was a quicker way, uh, I would I would let you know. It, it would be ideal if if it did it in one step. Well, you can just like concat I don't know chain your your shell commands together. But all in all. Um, Scaling a new EC2 instance, i.e., getting another one running, and uh, and and deploying a container on it. I'm going to say it takes about a minute. And previously, uh, using uh, AMI, I mean Amazon AMI stuff is actually kind of like containers before containers came along. But this takes uh, in production about a minute. So let, let's say if I want to run uh, MongoDB yeah. uh, content, so I've got a compose file which links up like three Yeah, things, yeah you, three you just name it all in the compose file and the agent takes care of it. So what I do in de development is I like uh, sync the volume so that the MongoDB data is persistent. The database. Oh yeah, yeah. you'd probably, you need a volume mount or something? Yeah, uh, so it will mount up to uh, EBS, is it? Yep, you could do it. That's a, probably a very good way. I don't know. Does Mongo play well with the EBS? Hopefully. Okay, I might have been lying about the minute thing, but trust me, it's faster than AMI. AMI, who uses AMIs at work? Okay. AMIs take 10 minutes in my experience. This takes a minute. I mean, you can see here, oh, it gives you like updates, desired count two, running count. And with any luck, it will go to two. And I didn't set up the load balancer because that takes a bit of time. But, but having, in, in my in my experience at work, serving a lot of uh, users, a load balancer and two two easy two instances running running the container, you can handle a crap ton of load. In, unless you unless you write some PHP that's insane, I guess. I don't know why it's so slow now. <coughs> Am I doing it wrong? Okay, it's running now. As you can see, it desired count two. So that's how you do. That's basically how you do it. And. Yeah, so basically two of these things are running uh, are running 
a cut down docker based system and then if you go back here um, it's all set up for you hopefully you can see um, yeah you can go into the service you can see all the events you can see how it's been actually what you can make this faster because I think that the health check is a bit insane by default like it, o it only um, like only after a minute of um, successful requests that it comes online or something like that so th these little optimizations I think you can make but in, in my experience we can we can scale in about a minute um, yeah I'm not too sure I can be bothered with the load balancer can I show you the load balancer stuff? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's too complicated. <laughs> well, <clears throat> unless someone's really interested, I can show you how to set up the load balancer. I, I even have a script to help me set up the load balancer quickly. And uh, you can do like some crazy, this, this stuff works for me, but you can, you can, you can set up like crazy rules about how, how many unhealthy hosts you can have and things like that and um, yeah when you have the load balancer running you can do a zero downtime deployment which is pretty professional way of doing things unlike NEA who tell me that they're gonna be down for eight hours or something I hate those people anyone work for NEA how can your machine be down for eight hours it's insane um, yeah, sorry guys, I, I wasn't very thorough, but the video is a bit thorough. There's too, there's too many little things to worry about. But the e I really, this ECS CLI, you, you go uh, PS, and it tells you the stuff that is running. I think, I think that's how it works. Yeah, it's quite simple. It tells you, it tells you what you're running. Oh, I mean, actually, let's try to do something funny. Let's try to do Uh oh. Back, 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 back. Back, back, back. I think this is how you do it. Is that how you do it? Hmm, so this yes. Docker compose up. Oh, it's a, a service composer. Sorry, I forgot the command. You, you see, it notices there's a new um, a, a new task de definition, <coughs> and then the and then it, it coordinates the upgrade. It works. Trust me, guys. It works. Do I have to show you everything? Okay. Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> Still, oh, 20 minutes, thank God. <laughs> Thought I read it wrong. Um, yeah. It's easy to get log, ag log aggregation working. What does that mean? Uh, as in getting, getting all logs from all the containers. Actually, I haven't really figured that out yet. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it in my like tricky parts, the logging thing. Um, usually, I I rely on the app developers to have their own things that send shit back. But you can you can SSH if you enable it. You can SSH into your into your ECS and just do Docker. Like I can show you how that works now. I can just I should be able to just SSH into the bad boys. Mm -mm. Okay, I need to set up a security group probably. Let's go. How do you do this again? It's down, but... Oh! How do you change the security group? Change it from there. Down. Down? Yeah. Is this one? The bot, the right. Security. Uh, security oh yeah. Oh, oh, view rules. No, I want more ones. Click on the. Yes. Yeah, and then you go add add them. Oh yes. 
Uh, crate. Oh, no, no, just click on the deck on there. Yeah. It will pop up on the bottom. The oh, inbound. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Add. This is H. Tra la 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 la. Uh, what? Anyway. Oh, um, hmm. Oh, it's it's something weird, isn't it? Oh, easy to use it. Can you all see that kind of? Yeah, you can. You can see what it's doing here. It's got an agent, and it should be running my new thing. If it's not, then maybe I made a mistake in the uh, the uh, service. Was I unable to place a task because no container instance met its requirements? Insufficient me memory. Oh shit! Oh well. At least it's uh, <laughs> at least it told me what it was. Insufficient memory. Okay. I'm um okay well anyway you, you can figure out what the problem is sorry that, that demo is not the most polished one and yes I do associate in there if something's going wrong and I and I recommend you look at this events thing and if you want a, f a full demo that's not effed up look at my look at my YouTube thing okay guys that was really painful. <laughs> Why would there be insufficient memory? Riddle me that. Why isn't there authorization? Permissions. What is this stuff? Allow everybody. Allow Hendry. All actions. Add. Who invented this user interface? Principle is quite. Okay, who knows what's going on? <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so e the good thing is about ECS CLI is that if, if, you, if you do make a mistake, which I just did somewhere, is that it, it, will, it will make sure your service is uh, healthy. Okay, guys, um, any questions? I need the toilet again.
Elastic Beanstalk, which is like, uh, it's like ECS CLI, but for for developers, because you don't want your developers to mess things up. So that's the way I we use ELB for for developers so that they don't screw things up. But they're allowed to deploy and things like that. Well, I hope. That was useful, guys. Really do. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Because sometimes I know what it's like after lunch. I just just sleep. <laughs> and a, a, a synchronous stuff is not that great, is it? I'm one of those guys that like to sit in bed, wearing hardly anything, launch YouTube, get a pen and paper out, make some notes, experiment. Play with Docker. That's how I learn. Sometimes I do it at work. But usually someone's talking to me. Yeah, anyway, uh, hope that was useful, guys. Uh, I'm going to run away. But does anyone have their own apps? I want to help you guys Dockerize an app. It's so easy. I noticed that I think they've got more food out there, by the way. What? I think they've got more food. Four o'clock. Here's a tip for you guys. Let's go hit it now. <laughs> For the rest of them here get there. Oh, out of, out of curiosity, is anyone using PHP 7 in production? No. Good on you guys. I thought you might be crazy. <laughs> Use hack. Yeah, hack, yeah. Yeah, we hack. Yeah, hack is better. Are you working for Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> 